Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to Synchronicity Web TV. I am your host, Nadia Shaw, and this is your moment of synchronicity. Well, I'm so excited to celebrate with you today, someone you've seen on my channel a few times before already. This is the incredible Armand Diaz. You can call him Dr. Diaz if you want. I would, and I do. He is the author of several books, two books that I really love, Integral Astrology and Separating Aspects. He is a world-renowned astrologer, so, so accomplished, and we have a lot of fun together. Well, look, Armand is coming back to Synchronicity University, and he's teaching a five-part course on prediction. This is something that I think a lot of people are going to love, especially in light of Saturn going into Pisces. I think more and more people are going to be like, oh, let me know. the. F I need the security of knowing the future. Well, it is Armand that's going to help you out with his course. And you've got just a couple of weeks left to choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class, really an unheard of rate to learn from the likes of the very brilliant Armand Diaz, my friend. Welcome, Armand. Thank you for being here. Uh, thanks so much, Nadia. I am so, so happy to be here. And I'm so happy with that introduction. My gosh. I just love your work. I love how much you know like really you are somebody who has so much integrity with your practice and you know your stuff that's part of what i love about you as an astrologer so i'm really excited that you're coming back to my school i'm really excited about it too and i, I being a leo i could go, i could <laughs> listen to you gush all day long it's fine it feels it feels very good <laughs> yes <laughs> yes you are but the, yeah i'm excited this... about the course Okay, I'm in Egypt right now, and you know, like the Giza pyramids are here in Cairo, and I learned through the tour guide that the sun god Ra was incredibly important, and in many ways, this temple, this pyramid, was meant to align with their understanding of the sun god Ra, and so if you are a Leo, you can be the sun god in this moment, that would be okay, that would work. Well, I might. That, you know, I don't want. I don't want to get anybody angry or anything like that. You know, I, mean, I don't want to be. I don't want to overstep my bounds. But you know, oh it sounds God. pretty okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, a humble Leo. What? What? This is a contradiction in terms. But I think it's your Cancer Moon, right? The Cancer Moon gets real humble, but the Leo Sun is like, ah, look at me, <laughs> see me. <laughs> well, I have Saturn opposite my son too, so it's uh, oh, you know, okay. It, that's a that's a recipe for being humble. Yes, I have Saturn in my first house, so I get it completely. But mm. okay, now I'm going to invite you to be brilliant. Put humility aside for a moment. Prediction. It can yeah. be controversial to some people in astrology. Why do you think prediction is something that we should keep learning about? Because it works. I know, right? <laughs> I, right? But the first thing is, you know, I mean, you can make any kind of judgment you want about it, but it works. And so right. it's a thing, you know, I mean, we might as well, you know, uh, I'm anti-organic chemistry, but it works, you know, I mean, it's, it's not something that you can throw out. But, uh, you know, prediction, prediction is not necessarily this is going to happen to you. This is these are the prevailing conditions. What are you going to do with those conditions? I mean, for some folks, I have to say, for some folks, if you if you shoehorn yourself into a position, maybe somebody could predict what's going to happen to you. But mostly, mostly, you know, if it's raining outside, you could get soaking wet, but you could stay in or you could get an umbrella or something like that. You know, there's choices to be made. But you know, prediction is about knowing what the condition, what the prevailing conditions are and what the best way to handle it is. What's, what's the flavor of how you handle those those conditions? It's not about what's going to happen. Sometimes it is. but you know. Sometimes it is, but it's about how you use whatever energies are being presented to you. And yeah, we have a lot of choice and control over our own way in which we are going to interact with aspects or the sky or whatever transit is taking place for us. We have that choice and that can really change our experience of a given transit or progression or solar arc or whatever it might be. But yeah, prediction is actually a huge part of our tradition. 
I think. It's honoring uh, I, our I, ancestors. I, yeah. I, I, I think the original astrology, if you go way back, I think the astrology initially was about prediction. The idea that it was some sort of character analysis or something like that is, a, is I think, a much later overlay. And I think it was done more, more it was done poorly. It was done poorly and tends to be done poorly in comparison to prediction. You know, um, I was I was reading I was reading a description um, in a book recently about uh, it was from the Middle Ages. I think it was like, uh, well, no, it was actually from antiquity. And, you know, Pisces women were going to be kind of loose and given to pleasure. And there would be a lot of scandal about them and they would live 72 years. I mean, you know, <laughs> was, yeah. well, like this, this was that that was natal astrology. You know, I mean, it wasn't that was that was poor natal astrology. It wasn't all like that. But the I you know, think about a birth chart saying this is what your life is about, right? This is what your whole life is about. Well, I mean, it's your birth chart when you're four. It's your birth chart when you're forty. It's your birth chart when you're seventy. I mean, you know, it, it's going to tell you what your life is, what your life, what your personality is. Now, nah. you know, I mean. Prediction is actually the thing that helps us to understand what's coming up next for us. And that's and that's what's real. Wow. Yeah, I, I think it's so interesting that I actually think that the reason astrology became spiritual and then with the discovery of Neptune and then psychological with the discovery of Pluto was actually a survival mechanism of astrology. Like astrology with the discovery of Uranus became vilified and it was chased out of universities and out of Western universities anyways. And so astrology sort of was trying to figure out how it was going to adapt to how people were understanding themselves differently as human beings were understanding who they are differently and found its place first in the new age movement and then on into the psychological uh, movement. So but it's wonderful to return to the roots in some way. And I think that's part of what we do with prediction when we really look at, you know, what could be happening. It's a powerful way of speaking truth to our clients, to the person in front of us. It, it's very validating to them. Well, I mean, and that's it. You know, I mean, how many people come? I mean, maybe a younger person before they're sad in return, before they hit 30, maybe they want to know something about what should I be doing? What is, you know, what's my, and uh, look, <laughs> and then you might, you might be thinking that same sort of thing around your second Saturn return too, I don't mind saying, but you know, maybe there is something in the chart that, you know, like somebody wants orientation about what their life is about, but generally speaking, most people are interested in what's happening now. I mean, you know, they're not really call. I mean, they don't call me typically, to say, you know, well, just tell me something about myself. Usually it's like, well, I got an issue over here. What's going on? And, and I think that it, it's very, it's that practical side of things that brings a lot of clients in and it answers their questions. That's amazing because it, it's so true. I remember way back in the day when I was doing readings at my kitchen table in downtown Toronto, how many people would come to me because they were having a Saturn transit or a Pluto transit. Like those are the really big ones that bring people to astrology. But yeah, they would be having these difficult Saturn or Pluto usually, not always, but usually they would be having these transits and they wanted to in some way make sense of it. They found it validating if I talked about it with them. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense that people come to us if we just tell them, oh, it's a serious time right now, but you could use it to be more successful instead of saying, whoa, it's a it's a tough one right now. You know, like just being able to acknowledge it's tough for them. There's something so validating about that to people that in and of itself ends up being very empowering. Well, you also you understand, too, the nature of the transiting planet, right, whether it's Saturn or Pluto or Uranus or Neptune you know, the nature of that planet is giving you a clue of how to deal with it. You know, if it's Saturn, well, you've got to work through this and it's not going to be fun, but you got to work through it on a step by step. If it's Pluto, you don't really have a lot of work to do other than figure out what's, what's, what's the best course of action in the moment. But there's, you know, Pluto's not asking you to work. Pluto is 
taking you through this experience. Similar with Neptune, but Neptune gives you a different experience. And Uranus is offering you opportunities, offering to take you out of your box, get you out of the box and get you to experiment with life. So, you know, you know how to deal with these things. You know, in the course of time, you can have to the same to your moon, you could have all of these transits. Um, and, you know, astrology tells you, OK, yeah, you know, you're going through this now. This is the way you ought to be dealing with it. Okay, um, before I, because I know we are going to talk about Saturn transits specifically. So everybody out there, get your charts ready. We're going to talk about it in a moment, but I'm going to be selfish for a moment here. I just realized as I was talking to you a couple of things, because before we started talking, one of the first things I said to you, like before I turned on the camera anyways, because uh, we were laughing and chatting the way that we do. And I said, I'm looking for home. I'm looking for a home because once I find home, I'm going to get a chihuahua. Like that is my dream right now. And I just realized as we were talking, not only is Neptune squaring my moon exactly, but right now Saturn has just entered my ninth house. So no wonder I'm like, where in the world is home? Where do I have to go to find that next place that feels like home? It's, I mean, it's incredible to me that. I just realized all of this. <laughs> these are huge <laughs> transits. I would be telling people, yo, you're going to have these transits like in five years, be on the lookout. And here I am realizing that this is happening right now today. Saturn yeah. has just entered my ninth house. Wow. So it's incredible how they speak to us, the planets. Yeah, well, you're like a lot of us, uh, you know, the you're great with astrology for other people, but then you sort of neglect the fact that you, you're looking for a home with Neptune square your moon. You, you know, you, yeah. it, it, enjoy the search, enjoy the search, probably be a little while before you actually find it. But wow, you're so right. I have to accept that. I just have to accept it now. But can I bring a Chihuahua along for the ride? Is that fair? It's a sixth house moon. I mean, think? I would say, I would say, you know, the thing to do would be to get to Chihuahua and wherever the Chihuahua is, is home, right? Oh. That, that's where home, home is, where the Chihuahua is. That's yeah, I, I got to get myself a Chihuahua. I would say I met somebody and he was a nice enough person. But once he brought over the dog, once he brought the Chihuahua, like that was it for me, like my heart went to this gorgeous little chihuahua. I'll try to put him up on the screen here somewhere because this was a very, very special dog. Um, okay, let's put that aside. Let's talk about your course. So once again, <laughs> it is Armand Diaz who's coming back to Synchronicity University, this time with a five-part course all about prediction. So this is really getting to the roots of astrology in terms of our tradition that is rooted in prediction. That is an important part of what it is that we do. And Armand is the perfect person to teach it. Now you've got just a couple of weeks left to choose your tuition rate. As long as just $5 a class, like literally choose your tuition rate is on for a very, very limited time. So you can get all those links and more information below. I know as part of this course, Armand, you're going to be talking about progressions, solar art directions. You're going to be talking about annual perfections, uh, zodiacal releasing, and so much more. But transits, right? That's what we're going to talk about here today, even though there is a class on that as well. Why do transits matter? What are transits? Why do they matter in prediction? Well, transits are the root. I mean, from from tech from a technological from a technique point of view, transits are the root, right? I mean, you're going to apply transits with any of the other things. Um, and the if you understand how transits work, you can understand most of how the other techniques work as well, right? So th it's it's the basis of the root. I mean, transits are a great way to learn astrology straight out. I mean, that's, you know, I, I actually learned transits before I ever took a course on how to interpret a natal chart, and it works really, really well. Uh, so tr transits are the root. Once you get the vocabulary down for transits, like the advanced vocabulary for transits, then the application of it to something like annual perfections or to progression or something like that becomes much easier. So that's kind of where you want to start. Um, and also, too, it's also that which works most directly. 
right? It's it's the thing that you can see on a daily basis. If you had to look at somebody's chart and say something in five minutes, like you know, if you're doing something at a coffee shop or something like that, you, you wanna you wanna be looking at the transits. That's the way you start. Yeah, one of the things I do is I ask people their age because I know at certain ages they're going to have certain transits, especially Saturn transits. And so if they tell me their age, I'm able to say, oh, okay, so some of this may be going on. And if I know their age, I can kind of guess what sign their Saturn might be in. It, just that can help people so much. So actually, let's talk about Saturn transits at that. Um, what do people need to understand about a Saturn transit? Any Saturn transit is going to give you work to do. It's going to be responsibilities. It's going to be, it's going to, it's going to, whatever planet or point is being hit by Saturn, it is going to paint it in shades of February. It is going to, you know, I look out my window, yeah. I look out my window and it could be a beautiful sunny day in May or it could be a beautiful sunny day in August, but sometimes it is a cloudy day in February. And, and that's a Saturn transit. You know, it, it's not going to be a ton of fun. Uh, for folks that are on good terms with Saturn, it's usually okay because, because they're used to looking out the window and seeing some rainy days. But uh, it, it's demanding you to make a choice. That's always part of it. You've got to make a choice. It's asking you for commitment. Saturn doesn't really care what you commit to. You know, you could you could commit. I'm going to stay with this job and do my best. Or Saturn, or you could say I'm quitting this job and I'm doing something. Else. Saturn doesn't care, but Saturn cares that you make a commitment. Saturn cares that you invest yourself in something. You got okay. I'm doing this. You know, I, I accept responsibility for my choices. You know, once you go in with that kind of an attitude, Saturn will say, well. Oh, yeah. You did okay, you know, and uh, will will not give you such a hard time. It's when you try to, you know, so let's say somebody had Saturn transiting their ninth house, you know, here comes, you know, I'm going to travel for work. Well, you could, you know, you have a lot of opportunities maybe to travel for work and that would go well, but you could say, nah, I'm just going to go lay on the beach. And Saturn would say, mm, are you really making the right choice there? You know, Saturn just asks you to make make a choice, make a commitment. And if you're choosing to work, if you're choosing to put in the effort, Saturn's going to be that much happier. How do you feel about maybe just giving us some very quick key words of Saturn through the houses? Would that work for you? Like if we were to just say, what can people expect if Saturn is transiting their first house? And maybe one or two sentences per house so that people can immediately start applying Saturn transits. What do you think? Sure. I'll do it. Okay. I'll do it. Yes. So Saturn That's in the, the sign of a brilliant astrologer right there. Like, hell yeah, I can do that. Let's go on the fly. Saturn in the first house by transit. You take care. Okay. Saturn in the first house is a kind of a wonderful transit, especially when it goes right over the ascendant. It's actually, I, I think, the easiest transit. It's self-empowering. You make decisions that are good for you. This is the thing with Saturn in the first house. You make decisions that are good for you. It can be a little cold. You can cut people off sometimes because if they don't have that, you know, you can, it can be a little cold. You take care of yourself. You put yourself first. But, you know, you also, you know, be healthy. You know, it's a good time to work on your health and well-being and stuff like that. But it gives you the opportunity to renovate your life, to start, uh, to start, really to start over again. Yeah. Saturn in the second. Don't spend too much money. <laughs> you, <laughs> right? have to be, yeah. you have to be fiscally fiscally responsible. This is not a time to buy luxury items. This is not a time to splurge. It's not really a time to speculate a lot. It's a time to be a little bit more conservative with your resources. Yeah. And keep in mind, like Saturn transits do last like two and a half, three years. So it tends to be, they tend to bring with them lessons that they really stick. You go through a period of time, but then those lessons really stick. Yeah, they do. They do. Although when Saturn first enters the house tends to be when you really get it in your face. And then, you know, after after two years or so, you know, you're kind of used to it. You just like <laughs> you haven't bought a luxury item in two years and you're like, well, <laughs> so. Yeah. How did I make it this far? Yeah. What is luxury anyways? <laughs> ah. OK, Saturn in the third. 
Don't buy a car, or you have to buy a car. <laughs> oh yes. Now, Saturday, oh, yes. Saturday and the third, you might have ch- you might have challenges with your siblings, um, or like the, na- the neighborhood. Um, you know your communication. It could be a time when you're trying to learn skills, but it's a little bit of delay and stuff like that. Saturn and the third is not the worst. It's not the worst place it could be. Tell you the truth, you know you. Yeah, it's got to be somewhere. (laughs) Saturn in the fourth. Uh, Well, call the plumber. Uh, Work, work on the house, work on the house um, or home responsibilities around family. uh, Definitely like your physical residence. Often when uh, Saturn is in the fourth house, you want to you want to be at home. You want to be at the place where you feel at home. And yet it's it's elusive. We have to wait for Saturn, which is true of Saturn's transit through the houses in general. When he's in the house, you kind of want that thing to work and it doesn't. And, you know, and it's delayed. So Saturn in the fourth, where am I going to be? Saturn in the fifth. You had to get serious about creativity and romance and fun <laughs> it's, uh, it's ironic you gotta get serious about it um or or else you just cut yourself off from that you know it's really it's asking you for a commitment in terms of your creativity it's asked you know it's asking like you know are, are you ready to shine someplace are you ready to do your thing that which brings joy to your life and you know saturn tests you saturn says well you can't do that now you can't do that for a while we're going to hold you back you love to go skiing you can't go there's no snow (laughs) you can't go skiing and so but does that does that stop you from ever being a skier or does that sort of like renew your commitment to it in the sixth a lot of times uh co-workers Mm co-workers are 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 big one co-workers work um, in the sixth house, you could really put in a lot of effort and not really see the results right away. You know, Saturn, you know, Saturn delays. He, he, ah, the thing about Saturn, he asks you for commitment. He asks you for effort. And then he says, well, okay. And later on, he gives you. The other thing, Saturn in the sixth is really good for you to take care of your health. I wouldn't say that, it, you know, and there's any problems, but it's a great time to, you know, it's a great three years to go on a diet, have an exercise program and things like that. In the seventh. Well, then it comes to relationships, right? Then it becomes a matter of, you know, I really want a relationship. I, you know, I, I'm going to get it or like we have this relationship. Let's let's get married. You know, it's like this sort of like, let's let's make it concrete, you know, or alternatively, Saturn will come with like, oh, you know, let's forget it. I'm never going to find anybody. That's it. It's all over. You know, I'm, you know, relationship isn't for me, that type of thing. So, you know, again, you tend to want it and it tends to be a little bit delayed. If you're in a good spot, it is like a sort of firming up of commitment, though. And the eighth? Uh, this is sort of like the therapy transit of Saturn. You know, you go through, you, you're you're taking your own emotional stuff out and examining it and looking at it and see what you can do with it. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of processing that goes on. And, you know, sometimes you have to deal with inheritances and, you know, your partner's finances and insurance and all that that. It's junky stuff too but yeah. generally speaking it's it's more like an internal processing time it's uh it's the therapy transit and we touched on in the ninth already anything else you wanted to add <laughs> no, i mean generally speaking the saturn through the ninth house is you know it's a good opportunity for traveling for work and it's not really like you know it, when saturn's in your ninth house if you decide you're going to go on a nice vacation and lay on the beach you'll probably be thinking about work the whole time anyway so you might as well go to a nice you might as well go find a nice place to do some work yeah that's what i'm looking for right about now okay in the 10th saturn in the 10th you get uh you get a reward for the work you have done in terms of your career, your profession, your your reputation, all of those 10th house things. Saturn is, after all, the natural ruler of the 10th house. So you get a nice boost from that. And the the reward usually comes in the form of more work. You know, this is the kind of, hey, 
you're a really valuable resource around here. We're going to give you a promotion. You're going to have to take over this responsibility from this coworker who's departing. And we're going to get you a salary increase just as soon as we can. <laughs> you know, it's that kind of situation. If you continue to work all the way through Saturn in the 10th house, though, when he goes into the 11th house, that's when you usually get the payoff for the work you do. In the 11th. Uh, you know, Saturn in the 11th, um, you often winnow out your friends. You know, um, there's a lot of things that can happen with the 11th house. I think, you know, groups and associations and stuff like that. But I think one of the most direct things that people feel when Saturn is in the 11th is that a lot of their friends, like, you know, if we're really on the same page, this is really great and we're going to be friends for life. But if I'm just your friend because, you know, we used to hang out together and we're used to each other and things like that, you know, we used to work together or you happen to be in the same neighborhood, those those friendships tend to sort of fall apart. Um, and you, you often lose folks when, when Saturn is in the 11th. But it sort of clears the ground for people who really are on the same page with you. You do want people who do share your ideals and values. Some of, you, know, you want to be with people who you want to be with. Oh, I hate the term, but you want to be with your tribe. You know, you want to be with the folks that are on. on the, I just keep saying, uh, you know, share your ideals or on the same page with you. If, if it doesn't work, then it, then you tend to let them go. And finally, Saturn transiting the 12th. You'll die. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. No, no, no. I might no, have no. Edit that out. Yeah, no. I've had no. Saturn it's... moving through the 12th. Nobody died during that transition. No, Don't no, worry, no, everybody. No, 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 yeah, it doesn't no. necessarily mean that. Yeah. No, no, it wouldn't. I, I wouldn't even think it typically means that. I don't, yeah, astrologers have a very dim view of the 12th house, but I think it's getting brighter all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Saturn in the 12th, it would be a. What really is reliable about Saturn in the 12th is that no matter how much you have going on in your life, when Saturn is in the 12th, you somehow feel like you're behind the scenes. You're waiting for Saturn to go over the ascendant when, you know, you really renew and renovate your life. And, you know, I mean, believe me, when I had Saturn in the 12th, I, I, I got my doctorate. I wrote my first book. And, and you know, it was pop. You know, I mean, it was popular. It worked. I mean, everything worked the way it was supposed to be working. But when Saturn was in the twelfth, I was sort of like, and when stuff going to start happening? You feel like you're behind the scenes in your own life. It's a bit of a time. It's a great time for retreats. It's a great time for uh, meditation. It's a really good time to start a spiritual practice. Um, and it is not really an impediment to doing things. It really isn't. It just feels like somehow or another it is and then saturn goes over your ascendant and there you are there you are yeah i find the 12th house saturn really good for like wrapping things up if you will just like you did right you wrapped up your phd you did what you had to do you got stuff together and then saturn goes over the first and ta-da world here i am look at me i have that phd that's how it worked out for you. <laughs> well, Armand, thank you so much. And once again, everybody, you see how brilliant Armand is. He has a five-part course on prediction coming up very soon this March 2023 at Synchronicity University. You've got just a couple of weeks left to choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class, an unheard of rate to learn from the likes of the very brilliant, very accomplished, and very dear, my dear friend, Armand wow. Diaz. Armand, thank you for being here. Thank you for just bringing all your love and your brilliance. And really, you're just, um, you're some of the best of what astrology is today. And I say that very sincerely. So I'm so happy oh, to have you, you at so my much, school. Nadia. Thank you so, so yeah, much. Of course. And your books are brilliant. I was going to swear. I do have a Sag moon. So just, to, just before brilliant, I was going to say something that is an expletive. <laughs> But let me just say, his books are brilliant. You should check out his books as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so looking forward to this course, Nadia. I, it's going to be great. Yeah. It's going to be great. And I'm, I, I know the students are going to be wonderful too, because that's my experience with Synchronicity University. So I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun for sure. Lots of learning, lots of, lots of everything. And you're so entertaining anyway. So yeah, that'll add to the fun as well. Yeah, it's great.
Yeah, well, thank you so much again, Armand. And thank you, everybody out there for watching. Until we connect again, take care. Bye.